I've been pouring silver art for over two years and made hundreds, if not thousands, of sandcast moulds. So I know what works and what doesn't. So you don't have to waste time and money trying. In this video, I'll show you how to make great sandcast impressions for your metal pouring projects. Let's go. So first up, we have the actual item you're going to be using to make the impression in the sand. As you can see, this is a 3D print, which I've done at home and it's come out really cool. But to get the best impression in the sand, we've had to do a bit of processing on it and had to do a couple of secrets. Now, this is the first one. What I like to do is spray the 3D print with a clear flawless lacquer. Now, what this will do, it will just aid when we come to pull the 3D print out the sand and it will avoid any breakage. Also, it does help to flatten out any rough areas on the 3D print. So the next job is to make sure the all the edges of the 3D print are nice and smooth. So what I do here, I just sand off the base because this is where it's been attached to the print bed. So we get it nice and smooth so when it comes out the sand, it won't rip any of the sand with it. So that's all we're doing here, just a little bit of high grade, high grit sandpaper does the trick. And now once that's done, we put a bit of talcum powder or corn flour or some sort of parting powder on top of the 3D print and again, this is another little trick that helps it come away from the sand because we need it to come out without breaking the sand. So that's what we're doing there. So now it's time to select what type of flask you're going to do it in. I've got a rectangular one here, this cast iron, and it fits just right. It's perfect. There's enough space all the way, all the way around the edges. Now, once you've got your flask, you've got to look at what you're going to use. Now, this is Petrobond style sand. Now, all what this is, is just sand with a type of oil mix in it so it holds its shape. And this is what's going to give us a good impression over the 3D print. So first job, as I say, it is sand, so we need to sieve it to get it nice and fine. So we only do this for the first layer straight on top of the print. So then this fine layer will give us a good impression and some fine details. So once you've got enough sieved in there, all you've got to do now is gently press it in, making sure that the print stays where it is. Now you've got to be a little bit delicate, so what I like to do is try and hold the print in place, and then push it around the edge as you can see here, and then that should hold the print where it is. Now once that's done, you can be a bit more heavy handed and get the hammer. Hi, I'm Matt Silverpunk. I hope you're finding this um, tutorial video helpful. If you do find it useful, it might be worth you checking this out on screen. This is over on my website. I've put together a little downloadable PDF called the Complete Beginner Guide to Silver Pouring. In it, you'll find all, the, all my little hints and tips and tricks. So if you are new to silver pouring, it might be worth you checking out. Now, back to the video. So now we've got the initial layer on, basically, basically all we need to do now is fill this side of the flask up and it's just keep doing what we're doing, layering it, layering it on and pushing it down nice and firmly and then what we'll do, we will get the hammer out again and give it another bang down so it's nice and compacted so we're getting a nice crisp impression from that 3D print. So what we do now, we scrape off the excess and we make sure we get a nice flat surface because obviously when we flip the flask over, this is what's going to be laying down on the desk. So we want this really nice and flat so that we then can put the top of the flask on and then basically rinse and repeat, we do it all again. So as you can see here, the prints actually move slightly, but it's not a problem. All we're going to do is manipulate the sand, sand around the edge. As you can see, the gap at the top as well. We'll do that as well. We'll just push the sand in and we're good to go. All we'll do now is put a bit more parting powder, a bit more talc on it, and then we'll get the top of the flask. And like I said, we just rinse and repeat. We just fill the flask up all the way to the very top again.
And now the moment of truth, we flip it over. As you can see, we've got a nice impression for the back of the bar. And what we've got to do now is the pour hole. So that's what I'm doing there. I just scrape a bit out with my thumb. And then I've got this old kitchen knife and you'll see the, the actual points broken off. So this works really well because I'm getting a nice flat edge right up against the 3D print. So I scrape that down the print. So you'll see here, I just scoop out the sand and this is where the, the silver is going to be poured into the mold and we'll get a nice clean sprue hole so it can work really cool. And you got to, the, the only thing you need to watch here, you've got to make sure that there's no debris, no loose sand in this bit. Because obviously when you're pouring the silver in, any loose sand will actually go into the cast and it'll ruin it. So what I like to do is compact it really well and then give it a little brush. As you'll see here, I'm just, you've seen all the, all the debris come out. I'll just give it a nice brush down and that'll ensure we get a nice clean pour. Yeah, as you can see, nice and clean. Now all we've got to do is the same again on the other side. Now we've got to get the 3D print out. Now all I'm doing here is giving it a little tap to try and get a bit of air under underneath it because sometimes they will drop out. But this one's been a bit tricky. So I'll give it another little tap and we'll see. No, so I've got to use the tape technique. Now just some really strong sticky tape and you just push it on the back and then you just pull it out and that's all we're doing now. And I find this eBay tape's absolutely brilliant for it because it's really sticky. There you go, it's done its job. And look at that, how cool is that? It's come out really, really well. You can see the, the lettering, I want to believe, and all the details, and that's all there is to it. That's all you need to do to get a good impression. But obviously this isn't finished. We still need to do a couple of other things to ensure that we get a good pour. Now, the next thing that we need to do, as you can see, look how cool it is. We've got a little bit of a breakage just on the middle part, as you can see in the sand, but nothing, nothing too bad. I mean, you could do it again and it would probably come out perfect but I was trying to do this quick for the camera. But as I was saying, we do need to do some vent lines now because we do want the pour to come out as, as good as we can. And what these vent lines do, basically the lines coming away from the cast and this will let any steam or any gas escape once we do the pour. Now what I like to do with this, as you can see, this is a little corner on the cob holder and I just scrage, I just scratch in the lines going all the way to the edge of the flask and, then, and this will ensure that we should get a good pour. So here we go, I've quickly done the other one for you. So as you can see, there's Spooky Molder on the phone and I'm sure you'll agree. Look at that, it's come out really cool. And this would pour, this would pour absolutely fabulous. I can't wait to get the furnace on and get it poured. And that's all there is to it. If you want some really cool, nice crisp sand cast, that's the way I do it.